Okay, I've got 12.03, so I think we should um, begin the session. So my name is Dean McEwen, and I'm overlooking, overseeing the Master of Management Analytics program here at Smith School of Business. So thanks a lot for taking time out of your day to, uh, to learn about the program a little bit. Um, a couple of housekeeping items. So uh, we do have a Q&A button with Zoom. And so if you uh, have any questions or comments you want to make, um, please use that Q&A. I see that there's already a hand up. So LM, if you could use the Q&A part, that'd be appreciative because I've got my colleague, Alex, and Alex is going to be um, answering some of those questions uh, live as we go through. So it's no issue for you to ask a question during the presentation. Um, and then he's actually gonna be leaving a few, uh, what I would call general questions for me at the end that I'll answer online so that everybody can see the answers for or hear the answers for that. So um, that's how we'll go along. Um, just as a quick reminder, as the screen says, we're here for our Master of Management Analytics program at Smith School of Business, and um, let's get on with it. So the first thing we do is a land acknowledgement. So um, Smith Toronto is situated on the traditional territory of the Huron, Wendat, and Patoon First Nations, the Seneca, and the Mississaugas of the Credit River. We're grateful to be able to live, learn, and play on these lands. Okay, now um, getting into analytics, what we're here for. So uh, I, I actually love this quote for a couple of reasons. And so one is that it's bang on, right? And then the world needs um, people who can be those translators between technology and uh, the business side, right? You need people who can speak both the software engineering and manage those projects, but you also have to uh, speak the language of the business people who can sort of identify the problems that they're actually trying to solve and think about sort of the resources you're going to need and how you're actually going to do this. So that's what this program is specifically built for and designed for um, to, to sort of educate those translators who can do a little bit of both um, because that's missing. And the other, so that's the first reason why I like this quote, but the second reason I like it is because if you'll notice the the date, it's July 2017. And, you know, even though uh, they're, you know, this is what now seven years old, it's still as relevant today as it was in 2017. And that's one of the reasons why I haven't changed it in this deck is because it still is what the companies need. And certainly, you know, um, and I'm happy to talk to you about this like decades long journey of analytics and evidence-based decision-making that I've gone through. Um, but I find it quite fascinating that it hasn't been quite embraced as much as it should be. Uh, there's certainly pockets of it who say, yeah, we need to be using this data that we've got so much of, uh, but there's a lot of gaps in there still. There's a lot of organizations that don't use data as well as they should. And the reason they don't use it is because they don't have people who have this kind of education in analytics and evidence-based decision-making. And this is why, you know, again, jumping to uh, 2023 and 2024, um, you know, this is a report from Gartner, the Enhance Your Roadmap for Data Analytics Governance. So uh, it is 2023, um, but, you know, it says here by 2026, you know, large enterprises are using a single data and analytics governance platform. And so, again, this is why this program is so important and so relevant today is because companies are still trying to figure out what the heck to do with data. Right. They, they, they are some certainly there's some pockets of it who use it very, very effectively. But I would say in general, an organization as a whole uh, really struggles, right? They're struggling with how to do it. They've got like multiple business units, each with their own data sets. They've got individual business units that are going out and buying data from different types of company. Uh, now you've got this introduction of synthetic data, which is another sort of, um, sort of fly in the ointment kind of situation. And so companies are really struggling now, but they're realizing, I think it's finally coming to a head that they have to do something about this. They have to be able to manage the data governance piece and they have to make sure that the data is not only safe and secure because cybersecurity is on top of everybody's mind, but it's also accessible. And that's the balance, right? That's the balance between security and access is because you need analytics and you need data in the hands of the business people who are actually 
solving the business's problems. And so this is why it's so important for people to take this kind of a program is because companies are desperate for this knowledge. And this is the other thing too, this, the same um, Gartner study from 2023. And I, I, I actually, I love the way that this looks because if you go around this entire, you know, we call it a square or a circle, um, there's nothing in there actually about programming, right? This is not about software development. This is not software engineering. This is actually about business. And so this is where it gets really, really important. And that first top quadrant up there in the top uh, left-hand side, becoming a successful data and analytics leader, right? And this is exactly what we're doing in this program. We're gonna be working on that. And we're basically working on every single square around uh, this, um, this priorities navigator that uh, Gartner came up with. And I just think it's amazing that we can do this. And certainly, you know, you as an individual are not going to be doing something for every single square here, but I think you as an individual should have an awareness of what's going on inside those different squares, because when you get your focused area, you need to have that knowledge be to be truly successful for your organization. Now, what do we do um, in here? And so this is where, you know, when you look at the courses, and I'm going to talk about that in a second, but really these are the three fundamental steps, right? And these are what I call the foundations for building success in analytics. So at the very bottom, you need verified and trusted data, right? That's our number one problem. You get a data set and oh my gosh, you find out it's as unclean as possible. And so you'll spend 80% of your time just cleaning the data set before you get to even think about doing any kind of analytics. And you don't dare do analytics without having a clean and trusted data set, right? That's so... We're gonna be looking at that in this program. How do you do this, right? How do you understand statistical analysis? How do you understand the acquisition analysis of data? And then you can start thinking about doing progressive analytics. And I'm gonna talk about that on the next screen, but there's four different types of analytics. And so it's important to understand those. And that's what we're gonna to be touching on in this program as well. And then ultimately at the top of this pyramid, you wanna to get to a system of artificial intelligence or automated decision-making, right? And I think, uh, AI is has a very fluid definition now, and I think as systems become um, sort of recognizable and acknowledgeable, right, then they lose that AI label and they become an automated decision making. So just think of something like spell check in your, uh, you know, in Word or or whatever food, word processor you're doing. Spell check is a type of what we would define today as artificial intelligence, but we don't think of it as artificial intelligence anymore. And I think that that's why the AI definition is so fluid right now, because as we get used to using something, it's no longer considered AI, right? We think of AI as some kind of like concept in the future uh, with uh, automated robots and that kind of stuff. But um, so anyway, that's where we want to get to. We want to get to a system where people don't have to inv be involved anymore. You want to build a model. You want to get your data. You want to analyze the data in real time. And you want a system to be make a decision for you. Now here, I mentioned about the different types of analytics that we're looking at in this program. And again, when you think about what these analytics do, right, they're each and every one of them is super important. But I call it progressive analytics because, you know, you're never just happy with the one. Descriptive analytics, for example, uh, is what happened, right? Uh, you know, think of dashboards inside your organization. You know, how many people did I enroll today? How many people have paid their bills? How many widgets have we produced? Um, that's very important information to have. And certainly every single manager and leader needs to know what's going on inside their organization at that moment. And that's where descriptive analytics comes into play. But we also know when we're planning out our businesses and we're trying to solve problems, we want to know what's going to happen, right? And that's where we get into predictive analytics. And this is where we're developing models to really think about, okay, if we, you know, produce this many widgets yesterday, then how many widgets are we going to produce tomorrow? And so we can do something like linear regression for, you know, have a nice quick graph to say, hey, if we're doing, you know, X number of units today, we can expect X units tomorrow. But that's never that good because there's a whole bunch of variables out there that can mess up your model very quickly. Um, the, of course, the most recent one is the pandemic coming along and that's going to start messing things up pretty quick. So what you want to do is get into what we call prescriptive analytics. 
And prescriptive analytics is about, you know, how to make it happen. Okay, what can we do as a business to make sure that this outcome is the one that's real? So you want to increase the sales of your widgets? Well, you know what? You can think about optimizing your, your supply chain, right? To make sure that, boom, you've got the supply you need. You've got the manufacturing facilities that you need. You can think about, okay, we're going to need a new factory to be built in this location to ship to these locations and these buyers. So this is how you make it happen. It's about optimization and really thinking about your business and <clears throat> how to make sure that you hit the goals that you want to hit. And then, like I said, at the end, it's, it's cognitive analytics is what we used to call it. Now we call it artificial intelligence, but it's about self-learning systems, right? Systems that we can feed it constant data and that can run it through a model and then it can make a decision for you. And the best way to think about this is like airline tickets or um, hotel room prices, right? You know that every time you log into a hotel website that that price per room per night changes. And that is based entirely on a model that looks at the supply and the demand of that room and it adjusts the price accordingly, right? So when there's lots of demand, the price goes up. When there's not much demand, the price goes down. But you don't have a person who's sitting there analyzing this or thinking about this on their own. It's a computer system that makes that decision for the hotel company. And this is what you want to get into. You don't want to have people um, getting involved. Now, what are we doing here? Why are we, what are we looking at here? So the Smith MMA program. So first and foremost, it is a professional master's degree. We design the course content um, to work for working full-time people. So if you're working at a job and you want to do a master's degree, uh, we don't offer courses Monday to Friday at eight to four, nine to five. Um, the courses are offered on evenings and weekends so that you can continue working full-time and take this degree, okay? The entire degree gets completed in 12 months. So yes, it is extremely busy. Uh, you will be tasked and you will be developing your organizational skills and time management skills like you never have before. And quite honestly, that's part of our intention, right? You come out of this program much, much stronger than when you came into this program because of this experience of working full time plus completing a full master's degree, all done in 12 months. And it requires a lot of focus and a lot of organization. There's no doubt about it. And this helps you, right, develop as a leader in your organization because you know what's possible. You know, I always think of it like, you know, um, you know, recently looking at watching the Olympics, right, and seeing all the world records that get broken. And basically what happens there is that people know it's possible. Right. So they try harder and they push themselves even harder. And so they constantly break the world records. It's the same kind of deal with this master's program. You're going to look at this and go, oh, my gosh, there's no way I can fit this in. I've got family. I've got job. Well, guess what? We have like literally hundreds of people take these programs that we offer at Smith every single year. And so we know that hundreds of people can actually do this and be successful and then what happens is you'll end up with your own personal world record at the end because you've done it and you've succeeded. And then you're going to push yourself for the rest of your career under these parameters as well. So it's really a way to develop leaders and to force you through this change. And, you know, you'll be able to take on just about anything when you've done this. OK, um, and so this program in general, right, we are trying to solve business problems. That's the key. And we want to use evidence to do that. We want to make our decisions based on evidence, not gut instinct. Certainly, there's a lot of gut instinct and intuition still involved in the decision making process. But what we would like to be able to do is push that instinct to the front of the decision making process. And this is how you develop a hypothesis. You think, OK, I think this is what's going to happen. And then you test for that. Right. This is where you want the evidence. You want to get the data. You want to make a decision that either proves or disproves your hypothesis. And that's OK. Right. You can be wrong, but you want the data to back it up. And this is going to help you again as a leader when you're trying to, you know, argue with your superiors about this is the best route to do. Evidence is going to help you do that. And certainly most organizations are, are realizing that and identifying that as well. 
Um, this MMA program has been running since 2013. <clears throat> so we've been around for a long, long time. We're literally the first MMA degree in Canada. And uh, as far as I know, around the world. Um, and it's, it's, I find it's, it's kind of flattering, actually, that a lot of other schools, in fact, most other schools have actually come up with their own MMA degree. Uh, and so they've, they've caught on to that. And I know, as someone who was around in 2013, when we were developing it, um, there was a lot of humor around mixed martial arts. And that was MMA at that time, whereas, um, you know, we've uh, been able to secure this as far as a degree goes, the Masters of Management Analytics has been well recognized across Canada and around the world as the definitive degree in analytics. And then since COVID, uh, one of the only good things that really came out of COVID was um, we do have a blended learning format now. So, uh, and what we call blended, so we do have in-person sessions there still. We have the two one-week in-person sessions. But beyond that, the classes are live and you can take it from anywhere in the world as long as you have internet access. So we have that blended, but then we still have our in-person Toronto session, which I'll talk about shortly. And then in Toronto, so this is the in-person session that I was just talking about. Um, so right now we have two start dates, January and May. Essentially what you'll do is you come to class one night a week. So right now it's Wednesday night. Uh, classes are usually around 5.30 to 9.30 uh, every single Wednesday night. Uh, a lot of that could change depending on the professor's availability and what's going on in our classroom facility, that sort of thing. But in general, it's pretty much every Wednesday night. And then we also have another class on a full weekend day. So right now it's Saturdays. And so that would be from 8.30 to 4.30. And you'll have basically two sessions that day of one course. Okay, and this is, happens every other week, and this goes on for 12 months. So every Wednesday for 12 months, and then every other Saturday for 12 months, you'll be in class in our Smith Toronto classroom facility, which is uh, conveniently located downtown Toronto at the corner of Smith and Front Street West. So think about right across the road from the Metro Toronto Convention Center, very close to the CN Tower. And that's where you'll be every single week, except for two weeks. Two weeks, we do uh, what we call in-person sessions in Kingston, Ontario at Queens. So we've got a number of facilities. This is our main campus is in Kingston. So it's about three hours east of Toronto. Um, and what we wanna do with these uh, two sessions is one, we have a, what we call opening session, and then the second one is like an innovation week. So the opening session is where you get introduced to your teams, your coaches, you start taking academic courses. And basically what we want you to do there is to become a full-time student for a week, okay? We know that you've got other commitments, but we want you to be able to focus on being a student. And that lays that foundation for being a student for the rest of the year. So it's really important that you, you know, participate fully. You have to attend, uh, there's no doubt if you, if, something comes up and you can't attend this week, we'll have to defer your admission to the next opening of the program because you have to be physical in, Cam in Kingston during that one week, okay? And that's, like I said, extremely important. And then part of our um, course delivery as well and this whole idea of a professional master's program is that we have an ongoing coaching, networking, and career support as well. We understand fully that um, you know, as a team environment or team program, talk about that in a sec, but as a team program, uh, you're going to need some guidance throughout the program, you and your teammates. So we've got coaches for you. Uh, we also understand that you take a professional master's program because you want to develop your skill set and your educational and learning to become a leader in your organization, which is going to have a positive impact on your career. So we also have a career advancement center. And so that's going to be really important. And the idea of having these sort of live classes is an opportunity for you to network with your classmates and your teammates and interact with the professors. OK, all of our classes are very interactive. We do a lot of things like case studies and discussions and topics. And so there'll be an opportunity for you as a student to basically contribute to that but also to learn and learn from your fellow classmates as well. And you'll learn probably just as much from them as you will from your professors as well.
Now talking about our blended format for a second. So basically a lot of it is exactly the same. So it's the same courses, the same curriculum, uh, the same coaching, the same teams, everything. We have the same start dates. We have two start dates of January and May. But what happens is this, it's the delivery method, right? Because what we want to do is be able to bring people in from outside of Ontario, certainly outside of the GTA, um, and bring in students from, uh, you know, BC, well, across Canada. And we, we, I always try to get people from every ocean, put it that way. So we've had people from Yukon, we've had people from British Columbia, Newfoundland and Halifax. And it's always kind of fun to be able to say that we have students who are from literally from across Canada. Um, but what we do is we have, we still have our two one week sessions. Okay. Which both happen in Kingston again. So you do have to travel to Kingston for those two one week sessions. Um, same deal opening session, you introduce to your coach, your teammates. Uh, there's a couple of academic courses you take as well. And it's the same sort of idea of focusing on becoming a student again for the first time for some of you for many years. Then on a weekly basis, uh, the classes are still live, but we use Zoom, okay? So you'll still have to log in at specific times. There's still an attendance requirement, uh, but all your classes are on Zoom. We use breakout rooms inside Zoom. So when there's gonna be a class discussion or a team discussion, then you can break out into those rooms and then come back to the center room. And we've got this technology figured out pretty well. So it's a very, you know, very good experience. Um, and so definitely if you're, you know, from Vancouver and you're thinking about doing an analytics program, um, this program can work out very well for you. And we have several alumni who have done it over the past few years as well. Now, just to focus a little bit on team-based learning. So what we do is, and this is at Smith, and this is all of our professional master's programs and our MBA programs are all team-based. So what we're going to do is we're going to put you onto a team, probably five to seven people on that team. And we actually don't allow any switches from that team. So you're sort of put into a situation like you would be at the office where you're put on a team and you don't have any say on who your teammates are. And so you're forced to work with them and you're forced to be successful with them. So we're kind of replicating that sort of environment. Now to help out with that, we give every team a coach. And these coaches are what we call high performing team coaches. They're fully accredited and they will work with you just like you would think about a basketball coach. Okay. The basketball coach never steps on the court, but the game itself is really fast, right? It's offense, defense, offense, defense. And so the coach's role is to make sure that the team stays focused on the goals that have been set out by the team and that you're accomplishing those academic goals. Um, things that you're, you're supposed to be working on, okay? Um, so that's extremely important. And that coach will then <clears throat> look at the team and see how the communication skills are happening, see how the team is working together, see how the team is identifying problems and dealing with those problems and working on, again, that focus of making sure you get your assignments done in a timely fashion. Because about half of all your assessments in this program are team-based. So again, little bit of pressure to make sure that the team works really well together. And this coach is going to provide you as an individual with strategies, knowing how you like to communicate. Are you an introvert? Are you an extrovert? Um, how do you behave under stress? Are you highly emotional? Those sorts of things. And the coach is going to give you strategies on how to cope with that and how to effectively communicate with your fellow team members to make sure that you're a high performing team at the end of the day. And again, you'll get this for 12 months of the program. And so you'll get this experience and this coaching as you go along, which again, leads a nice strong foundation for you to become a manager and a leader in your organization going forward. Now back to the program itself. So we have our curriculum is designed in such a way that it is progressive. Um, we start out, you know, with statistical analysis and understanding management uh, and how do you do a case study, that sort of thing. But it always has a practical application. Certainly my expectation for our professors and our courses is that you're going to learn something on the Wednesday night and you should be able to go to work on Thursday and think about how to apply that information. OK, that is a key part of, I think, any kind of business school program, but in particularly this MMA program. We are gonna be looking at mathematical and statistical theories and methods, but again, it's about how to use those theories and methods, right? It's always about practicing, figuring this out. How do you do this evidence-based decision-making? 
And one of the things about um, data, right, is statistical analysis. So you do have to be comfortable with stats and math and any kind of quantitative analysis to be successful in this program as well. So that is one point that, uh, you know, when we're looking at your, um, your um, transcript from your undergrad, we're going to want to see some kind of stats course in there, mathematics, calculus, and physics, and seeing some good grades there, because we're going to be hoping to see a B, B plus um, at a minimum on, on those types of courses. Okay, this program does develop those team skills. Uh, we're certainly looking at the business acumen, and this is where you're going to learn from your classmates. Uh, you're going to be able to hear their stories, how they dealt with situations, what did they find successful, what did they find did not work. And so those kinds of discussions in the classroom are going to be extremely important to you as you develop your own ideas and your own thoughts and your own plans um, for how you're going to do your job. And again, the communication piece is really important because, you know, when we um, think about what's going on in the world, right, technology is only going to get you so far. You got to be able to work with people. And this is why this is a team based program. This is why we want to focus on those communication skills, because it's all about working with people, convincing people, conflict resolution, persuasion, those sort of things are really important. And also, uh, we're looking at presentations and things, too. You got to be able to read and write. You got to be able to present effectively. And so you're going to see a lot of that in your assessments and evaluations throughout the program as well. And as I mentioned at the top, this is a um, uh, like a full master's program. So you can expect academic rigor as you go through our first couple of courses. We have exams. And so it's going to be really important that you're successful in those exams because they are the foundational pieces, the prerequisites for moving on to fuller courses. So um, you will have to do a lot of studying. This is not a situation where you pay your money and get your paper. Uh, you're going to have to do a lot of work in here as well. OK, here's the actual courses themselves. So what we've done is we've divided the program into three sort of categories. So we have our core analytics courses. So this are our quants, right? So um, if you look at those, you've got to be able to do that. We, we start off with 863, the foundations of analytics, and you get into the management of data. Then we start thinking about decision making, predictive analytics, and we get into machine learning and artificial intelligence. But like, as I mentioned, <clears throat> it's not just about the technical stuff and the quant stuff. So we want to understand management. We want to understand people. So we have a course, Foundations of Management, which, you know, some of you, if you have a business degree, you might think, oh, that's a bit repetitive. But you know what, if you think about this a little bit differently, saying, OK, like two thirds of the class don't have a business degree. So they really need to learn a little bit about management and how companies make decisions. Um, but you also are learning about how to work in a team. OK, this is one of the first courses you'll take and you'll become a team member. And so you get this sort of opportunity with the coaches available and, a, you know, a relatively straightforward, no quants, no software development uh, in this course, just to get yourself familiar with your fellow students, understand how to do a good presentation, how to do um, a good written report, that kind of stuff. And then project management is becoming even more and more important uh, where you look at both waterfall and agile project management. Um, and we're looking at a bit of like product management, because I know that that is becoming a very um, important part of most organizations where people become a manager of products or a product manager. And so that flows into the project management piece, because it's it's uh, a little bit more straightforward, I think, to organize an analytic solution as a product, as opposed to just part of the decision making process. And then we have, of course, an entrepreneurship and innovation. I consider this to be extremely important because we got to do things differently, right? Everyone's, everyone's been, um, been doing the same kind of thing for a very long time. And so our margins are way too tight for us to continue doing the same old thing. Our competitors are doing the same old thing. So we need to think about things a little bit differently. And this is where innovation comes into play. And I'm sure some of you are entrepreneurial, uh, you know, thinking about an idea that you want to push forward as your own company. Uh, and so we bring in entrepreneurship in there a little bit too, just to sort of hopefully spark that idea and that innovation piece. And then AI ethics and policy. So this is one of those issues where, you know, just because we've got the data and we've got the computing power, 
should we be doing some of these things, right? How do we identify bias in our data? Are we sure we're making the right decisions we're using these AI systems and, and artificial or um, machine learning systems? Because the reality is if you're making the wrong decision, you're making the wrong decision, not once or twice, but like thousands of times and a thousand times in a second, <laughs> because these computer systems work very quickly. And if you're at a bank, for example, and you're making credit decisions or loan decisions, uh, you know, you can't afford to have the wrong decision being made, right? So you want to be able to think about your decision-making process. How do you identify bias? And how can you make sure your system is working really well? And then this last course is leading change, which I think also is extremely important because as we develop these technical solutions, right, and we start doing things a little bit more digitally, um, there's a huge impact on people. And so even if it's real impact or not real impact, it, it's an implied impact. And so the leading change course dives into that a little bit about understanding people, how do people react to certain things and how do we make sure that we're going to be successful in leading change inside the organization? Because this is a different decision making process we're looking at. And so it's really important that you understand the impact that's going to have on people and how to make sure that your ideas are um, put forward and successful. And then at the, at the last column here is our electives. So depending on what your preferences are, uh, certainly in your career and in the industry you're currently working on, uh, we have different types of courses here for you. So operations, supply chain analytics, marketing analytics, financial markets analytics, we have pricing analytics, and then we have a 865, which is what we'll call topics and analytics. And so um, again, whatever sparks your interest um, in each of these areas, analytics is fundamental nowadays. And so if this is an idea you want to get into marketing, then, you know, take the marketing analytics course. Um, the other piece uh, for the topics and analytics, the technology is moving so quickly, right? So now we've got this course, we've called it topics and analytics, but it's going to be really focused on the latest and greatest. What is going on with generative AI right now, right? That kind of stuff. Um, what is the next uh, latest great thing? And we'll be talking about things like Databricks, Snowflake, you know, we can talk about data governance, those sorts of things. So that's what we're calling it topics and analytics, because the content of the course um, will likely change every year, it will likely be tweaked as opposed to changed completely. Uh, but we have that opportunity to do that if we want. Okay, and then uh, I've been talking a lot about business and about analytics and stuff. We do have a, a variety of tools that you can use. In general, the program itself is what we call tool agnostic. So we don't say, you know, thou shalt use Python. Um, there are some opportunities to use R for sure if you want. I think certain professors will be requiring your code to be in Python. But other things like SQL, Databricks, Snowflake, um, you know, those things are available. We have academic licensing for these things. We also have access to Azure, SAS, VIA, um, Tableau for um, uh, visualizations and things like that. So, you know, you have access to these um, if you want them. Uh, what we find is that most people don't because, you know, there's, well, there's, it's an interesting conversation we have a lot of times. There's no point in teaching Tableau if your company uses Click. Uh, right. So those are the kind of things that, um, you know, you want to think about. I certainly recommend trying it out, uh, getting the academic license, giving it a go for some of your presentations and things, because Tableau is very cool. But a click is also uh, a very cool tool. And certainly Microsoft and Excel and things like that do good visualizations, too. So um, this is your opportunity to try different things. And then who's teaching? So. One of the things we also do, uh, because it's a very, as far as the technology goes, it moves very, very quickly. So we do a combination of our tenure track faculty from Smith School, um, but we also bring in adjunct faculty from industry who are doing it on a daily basis. So we've got, you know, the four people here are all of our um, regular faculty at Smith. And so you're going to be getting uh, not only their expertise, but they're also getting their cutting edge research that they're doing on a regular basis. And honestly, um, most business professors have some kind of contact with industry and do some consulting and management consulting and that sort of thing. So you're getting that um, in real time, right, which is extremely important. 
And then when there's a topic, uh, something like, you know, we get into like uh, machine learning and natural language processing, that kind of stuff. It's important to get people who are doing it, right? Because again, all of our courses are very applicable. So we'll bring in some adjunct faculty to teach some of these courses uh, where we think that it's important for students to know what's going on today, right? What is important to business today in a topic, something like, as an example, marketing analytics, so we can bring in uh, an industry leader to teach that course. And then all of this wouldn't be possible without the guidance of our advisory board. So um, here's three people. Laura Bieta is the current chair of our advisory board. And so these companies, I mean, BMO, IBM, and Disney, uh, you know, they're all top, top-notch companies and they're leading edge with analytics and artificial intelligence as well. So what we do is we actually bounce ideas off these people, right? And they come back and they say, whoa, you know, um, this isn't that valuable anymore. You should really be focusing on this. And I'll just give a quick example. Um, the advisory board, they're the ones who kind of told us, okay, it's time to shift away from our programming and focus on Python programming because of its relevance and ease of use and in artificial intelligence and machine learning. And so, you know, you can see that in our curriculum that we've made that shift. And uh, that's, you know, due entirely to our advisory board. And so that's their role. They give us this advice um, of what's important to the companies when they're hiring people, when they're working on this stuff, what are the skills that our students need to know before they get hired at these major companies. And so that's one of the uh, amazing things about it. Okay, what does your class look like, All right? So right now, um, the average age of our MMA student class or student court is 31 years. Um, but I think the, the more important uh, stat is the range, right? 24 to 55. So what you're doing is you're getting young people coming out of university, getting a couple of years of work experience. They get an idea of what companies are all about and how decision-making actually happens. And they've got great technical skills, right? And they know about data, data collection, that sort of thing. And then you've got people at the other side, uh, the 55 year olds who are, um, they've got the business and the political acumen, right? They know how to get decisions made inside their organization, but they wanna learn about the, the digital and the data part, right? So you get this, these team environments, right? Where you get the young people plus the old people, you bring them together. And that's what we talk about a high performing team is when you bring in that kind of experience from different areas and that diversity of thought as well becomes very, very important when you're making uh, or coming up with solutions to some of the assignments we're going to give you. Now, as I, I did mention this earlier about, you know, we understand that people take these professional master's programs to enhance their career opportunities going forward. And as part of that, we have our, our career management framework and we have our career advancement center. And so the career advancement center has a whole other group of other coaches, their career coaches. And these coaches will teach you things like, you know, resume writing, uh, interview skills, mock interviews, communication skills, networking opportunities, that sort of thing. Um, but and, and along with the job board, right? So we do have a job board. They, they support the recruitment of people and the onboarding of people and things. So um, again, uh, very, very helpful for you if you're looking for uh, a career or the change or pivot. Now, this is the program, uh, the admissions requirements. So I'm gonna turn this over to uh, my colleague, Alex, and he's going to go through the next couple of slides about the admissions process. Hey, Alex. Thanks very much, Dean, and thanks to everyone for joining us on the call today. Hopefully, after Dean's very excellent uh, program overview, some of you may be interested in learning a bit more about the application process, and so I'm happy to talk about that for a couple slides. So you'll see on the screen there the basic admissions requirements. A completed undergraduate degree is required, as this is a master's degree, and as Dean mentioned earlier, we do usually look for at least one course in stats or math that covers those fundamental stats topics that you're going to need uh, to prepare for the program. Uh, two years of minimum work experience, we really do look for some hands-on analytics work experience, but that said, that can be quite broad in terms of the sector. You may be doing finance analytics, you may be doing healthcare analytics, you may have been doing engineering or computer science. So there's quite a uh, variety of work experience that, that we look for, but we do typically look for sort of a couple of years of work experience that you can bring to the program, bring to your projects. 
Uh, we ask for the name and email contact for two professional references. Ideally, one is a supervisor and the second can be from a colleague. Uh, we'll get official transcripts sent over from your undergraduate institution. If your degree was completed outside of North America, then we'll ask for a WES assessment in lieu of those official transcripts. And we can help you sort that out as you work through the application process. Resume cover letter, and then we'll set up an interview with one of the program directors. That's kind of the final step in the process. Um, and it does typically take a couple of weeks to move through that process, collect those documents, set up your interview. So although we do recruit on a rolling basis with no firm deadlines, we do encourage uh, applicants to get their application started as early as possible, especially for international students. It's really good to think about trying to complete your application at least three to four months prior to your desired uh, program start date. And the same goes for domestic students at least two to three months prior to your desired start date aim to have your application completed to allow you enough time to really prepare for the start of the program. And the final note there is you'll see that the GMAT isn't required. So uh, on that note, I think the general rule of thumb recommendation that I have to people is um, that's my job. My job is to help you through the application process to help you present as strong an application as possible, but also to help confirm your eligibility and help you decide if you are eligible for the program. So you don't feel like you have to make that decision yourself. Don't self-select out. A lot of people are unsure if they qualify. That's what I'm here to help you with. So get in touch with me and let me help you um, decide if you are qualified for the program. So as I mentioned, yeah, my name is Alex and I'm the recruitment and application advisor for the program. So if you do decide to apply or if you're not quite sure if you're ready to apply, get in touch with me and I'm happy to set up a call, answer any questions you have, give you an overview of the application process and yeah, give you tips along the way to help ensure you present the strongest application possible. And I would say we really want you to be successful and we want that success to start right from the beginning with the application process. We wanna help you work towards a successful application. We want you to be a successful student in the program and we want you to have success in your career and professional life after graduation. So we want to help you achieve that success right from day one, right from the start of the application process. In terms of fees, you'll see fees for domestic and international students listed there on the screen. Um, those fees are all inclusive. So they do include costs of all your learning materials, your digital licenses, your books, et cetera, as well as the cost for those on-site sessions that Dean mentioned. Um, so all your meals and accommodations uh, costs are covered for those sessions. The only additional cost is just your transportation to and from the session location, for example, Kingston. But once you're here in Kingston, everything is covered by those program fees. The typical payment plan is sort of three installments over the course of the year. Um, the program is OSAP eligible, which is good news for Ontario-based students, and we do have some partnerships for domestic students with RBC and partnerships for international students with Prodigy and Empower if you're looking into a student loan or line of credit. Uh, and there are some limited scholarships available as well, and so those are all things we can discuss further in more detail during the application process. So again, yeah, reach out to me. I can give you more information on, on financing scholarships, OSAP, et cetera. Okay, and with that, I'll hand it back over to Dean, and we'll address any questions in the Q&A. All right, thanks a lot, Alex. Yeah, um, I mean, that's the, the best advice we can give is to connect with us and let us have a conversation with you uh, about your application and um, any sort of strengths or gaps that you might have. That's going to be the number one important thing. And, and that starts by going here to our website, um, if you're ready to start your application. Uh, like I said, highly recommend that you just have that conversation, even if you're not interested in the January start and you wanna do May start, um, start now. Uh, there's no point in waiting because we can help you through that process. Now here is, um, so anyway, this is me and this is, uh, that QR code is my um, access to my LinkedIn profile. So please feel free to connect there. We do a lot of, um, talking in discussions and posts about analytics, artificial intelligence, and fintech on there as well. So um, that's, uh, you know, another good resource as you start thinking about your career in analytics and AI. Um, okay, so I'm going to answer a few questions now. And I've got uh, one question that came up so far. <clears throat> and it says, do graduating students usually stay with their current job after graduation? Or do they typically move into a different job? So I'm not going to get into the details of that particular thing. It goes on a little bit further, but 
Um, my recommendation as always, and gets back to this QR code that's on your screen right now, is LinkedIn is everybody's resume, right? And it's fully accessible. So I, you know, my recommendation is to hop on LinkedIn, uh, do a quick search for Smith School of Business and the graduates thereof, and then look for graduates of the MMA degree. And I would also recommend while you're doing that, look at MFIT and MAI degrees as well. And just take a look and see the people that have graduated from the program. See if you see yourself, right? So this particular person had, uh, I think it was like a biomedical degree or something like that, thinking about biotech and pharma. Um, look for that kind of a person inside that filtered data and you will find them because I know we have a lot of people who work in the healthcare industry, both in the research side of things, but also pharmaceuticals and marketing is really important. Um, almost every single hospital now has a data science department. And so we've got a lot of people that are moving into hospitals. And again, that goes into operations and research as well. Um, and then once you find that person, then the other beauty of LinkedIn is it allows you to reach out to them and say, hey, you know what? I'm thinking of taking the MMA program at Smith. I understand you did take it. I'd love to have a chat. You know, is it okay for us to have a 15 minute uh, virtual meeting and we can just talk about, you know, your experiences in the program, your career search afterwards, what jobs did you uh, go for, that kind of stuff. So I think that that's going to be, um, you know, your best route. I mean, the thing is, uh, the thing I want to be very impartial, right? And I'm always conscious of bias. So, I mean, I could give you names of people to go and search for. Uh, but it's never as good as you doing your own searches and just randomly picking people because you're going to get that unbiased information that's probably going to be most helpful to you. Okay, and it looks like all the other questions have already been answered. So I'm not, uh, so I'll give a final call for questions. Um, if you have any questions for us, if not, oh, there's one. Uh, what is the location of classes for the hybrid option? Okay, so um, so it depends what you mean by hybrid. Um, if you're talking about the blended program, so the blended program has two one-week sessions in Kingston, Ontario. So you do have to physically come to Kingston for those two one-week sessions. Um, and then after that, all the classes are online using Zoom. Okay, so we'll use Zoom for that and the next 12 months of your courses and stuff will be on Zoom. And then if you are thinking about Smith Toronto, we still have the two one week sessions in Kingston that you have to attend. But after that, all the classes are at Smith Toronto, which is at the corner of Simcoe and Front Street West. It's in a building called Simcoe Place. It's right across the road from the Metro Toronto Convention Center. So it's really handy to subways and, and um, go train and all that kind of stuff to get there. And so you would attend class there twice a week, Wednesday nights and every other Saturday. Okay. And I think that's it for the questions. I think we're all set, Alex. Um, thank you very much, everybody, for, uh, for attending today's session. As we said earlier, it will be recorded and uh, we'll send you a link to the recording if you want to listen to that. And of course, there's a bunch of other ones. But uh, the number one thing is just uh, reach out to us, talk to us, talk about your situation, and then we can, um, you know, we can guide you as you go along. Okay, it was great to see you. Thanks a lot and have a great day.